So John Stewart became the Dean of Medicine, no salary, and he saw the medical school through an area of big development, new buildings, uh, new extension, changes in medical education because of the Flexner Report. And so it was an important era through the 1920s in particular. And facilities were thought to be adequate and in fact as good as facilities for teaching medicine anywhere. Ambulatory teaching, teaching in outpatients and in the community was something that Dalhousie pioneered. Another event that affected the medical students was the Halifax explosion because you had 2,000 dead, 9,000 seriously injured, and 25,000 people homeless. The medical students were immediately recruited to assist physicians when they were dealing with burns and fractures and removing eyes because of the glass that was blown in on people's faces. And so the medical students, after three months in some cases of medical school, uh, were assisting with anesthetics and other serious operations. One unusual thing that occurred during the explosion was the availability of a new hospital at Camp Hill that had just been opened for the returning veterans from the war and it was available to take many of the people who were victims of the explosion and so much of the work went on there and this aerial photograph shows Camp Hill as it developed with the extended care areas in behind. That building has been torn down since then and the new QE2 Health Sciences Center is on that site. After the explosion and into the 1920s, many medical buildings were built, some of it with money that was left over from uh, the Halifax uh, explosion funds. And the Long University Avenue, a civic hospital, a hospital for the city of Halifax, public health building, a children's hospital, a number of other buildings were built. The Clinical Research Center, which now has the Dean's Office, was built in 1922 and still in use. And the Pathology Building, which is still in use, was built on University Avenue at the same time. Medical School, as I mentioned, was in the Forest Building. And so for many of the physicians, this was the medical school that they attended. And you see in a picture here the new facilities of the Clinical Research Center where ambulatory medicine and other things were taught and the medical school of the Forest Building just behind. And this is an unusual picture outside the Clinical Research Center where we now have the Dean's Office. I don't think this was the Dean's vehicle at the time, uh, but was obviously used to deliver things in Halifax. Grace Maternity Hospital was built by the Salvation Army to provide care to women and children. And teaching began to expand in the hospital so that you now had postgraduate teaching. It was also an era in the 1920s that Dalhousie pioneered continuing education. And the continuing education program of the university began in the 1920s and continues today. Facilities improved for teaching, and Dalhousie became well-known for its clinical teaching early in medical school and teaching in the community. Facilities for teaching were thought to be as good as anywhere, and this would have been a very modern physiology laboratory in that time. Students, of course, all wore suits, and this shows them steadily at work in the anatomy department looking at histology slides. About this time, the old medical school, the independent Halifax Medical College building was torn down. It used to sit just outside the main entrance to the Tupper building. So if you go out the Tupper building door and look to the right where the building now stands, that's where the old medical school was. The faculty continued to expand in numbers. The, the students increased. And the only vestige of the old medical school was the wood taken from the building and used to build this garage, which was on Summer Street. Now, a few years ago, we knew that there was wood in the building from the old medical school and wanted to preserve it. And when we did get the wood, it disappeared. It was thought to be wood that was being discarded and was burned. So the wood from the old medical school that we thought might be useful on plaques and other memorabilia uh, disappeared. Here we have some classes being taught 
in the forest building. Medical students had a lot of basic science teaching in those days prior to the clinical. And many of those physicians who went into the practice of medicine also continued not only as specialists in the area but also as medical missionaries. And this is a book about Dr. Sidney Gilchrist, one of the graduates who was highly regarded as a medical missionary. World War II changed the teaching of medicine because at this time they doubled up the classes. So we had two graduating classes in the same year to enable the physicians to go overseas. Many women graduated from Dalhousie Medical School and in 1944 they formed a local chapter of the Federation of Medical Women of Canada and had their inaugural meeting at one of their homes and have continued to be active ever since. The postgraduate training also increased after World War II and this shows a group of residents outside the hospital uh, in the midst of their training in surgery, medicine and many other specialties. The facilities continued to improve to keep up with the modern changes and advances that were occurring in research. The Victoria General Hospital established a new wing which was regarded as one of the most modern hospitals in North America at the time. This shows a group of interns observing operations in a fashion that we no longer use but was quite common in those days. The laboratory teaching of medicine to undergraduates also changed and improved particularly with the major alterations of the curriculum which occurred in 1968 and we can see people working at their experiments and at their labs. A change that occurred at the time of Canada's Confederation anniversary was the development of a new medical school. Now the Dean at the time, Chester Stewart, convinced the province that their gift to Confederation and to recognize this important anniversary should be a new medical school and that should be named after Sir Charles Tupper who was one of the fathers of Confederation and the only physician to be a Prime Minister of Canada. And so that construction began and the school opened anew. And you can see in the foyer of the medical school the plaque that indicates that the medical school itself is the Confederation project of Nova Scotia. The new building was opened by the Queen Mother who's being accompanied by the president of the university, Henry Hicks, and just behind Prime Minister Pearson and the prominent politician and premier, Robert Stanfield. The medical school was the most modern of its type at the time, 16 very large stories of laboratories and teaching facilities. Over the years since then, the facilities associated with the medical school have continued to expand. The resources of the Maritimes are used in teaching undergraduates and postgraduates. And the university is closely involved in the educational process that continues to evolve. So as we move into new eras, new research, and new advances, we should acknowledge that first group of courageous students who became the first class of a new medical school in 1868. And here they are looking quite enthusiastic and perhaps a little anxious as they began their studies at that time and were part of the first graduating class in 1872. So we welcome all of you to Dalhousie Medical School and hope that you will reflect on the history that has occurred over 140 years in one of Canada's longest lasting uh, medical schools. So welcome to Dalhousie.